Well, welcome to another opportunity to discuss infidelity. Sarah Gorrell and Tracy Sean, and tell us how you're mighty. The podcast that delves into the world of infidelity and affairs. And Tracy, we have a lot to delve into today because we have some wise advice, some joyful <laughs> advice on how to co-parent with your ex and the affair partner as well. What a glorious trio opportunity that represents. <laughs> Yeah, I, this this particular obnoxious bit of advice was sent to my universal bullshit translator at the blog, but I, I thought it would be like a, a deep vein to talk about for the podcast because it's such a part of the cultural zeitgeist that that you should be friends with your ex, you know, the whole conscious uncoupling or unconscious coupling or whatever Gwyneth Paltrow calls it. Um, but, you know, this whole idea that that there can't be any sort of animosity or even indifference that for the children, you have to be friends and wear matching holiday pajamas. And if you can't do that, then you're bitter. So I, I, I've had a lot of co-parenting with a fuckwit experience, but I have not had the additional shit sandwich of having to do it with an affair partner. So I think this might be more your level of expertise. Well, what do you I think about this? What do I think about this is that it's it goes beyond co-parenting because yeah. there's lots of talk about the sisterhood, and it and and it goes back to what what you talk about on your blog, which is triangulation, where the person at the centre of this, the person having the affair, who loves playing people off against one another, this represents to me a whole new opportunity to do that all over again because at the very end of the advice it says, this is the sisterhood. You'll bond together as you share laughs and jokes about him and his dirty underwear or whatever. <laughs> and it's like, really? This is going beyond co-parenting. This is actually making this individual who's had the affair central once again to both yeah. your lives there's not even any mention of the children in this they're talking about him well I, the part the part i read and i should probably backtrack here so this this comes from a blog called um like i don't know man, women women manifesting or something I, I apologize i'll put it in the show notes but it was it's under yes we can all just get along and the the subject that they the setup is let me tell you the story i'm reading here from this terrible advice let me tell you a story of two phenomenal women who are changing the way we view baby mama drama by being supportive and loving of not only two children they have by the same guy but of each other these two ladies have become very good friends while one of them is single and the other one is the other woman who is now married to their kid's father They've realized that it's not just about them anymore. It's about the kids and the environment that they have chosen to create. And then it goes on to say that, you know, tisk tisk, it's not a scandalous affair because now this is the the ex-wife and the now wife tress, uh, other woman now wife. They hang out together. They babysit each other's kids. They celebrate not only their kids' birthdays together, but they celebrate each other's birthdays as well. I think that this is a fantastic example of maturity and deep rooted love. Okay. Your thoughts, Sarah? I think it's a fantastic example of immersing yourself in dysfunction when you should be walking away from this situation and not making this person continue to be central to your life. Because I think you can. I mean, I, my ex is now married to the other woman uh, he has very little to do with the children, but my my daughter occasionally goes over there. And so she will see the other woman. Mm -hmm. My approach is to say nothing. I don't talk about her. I don't talk about them. As far as I'm concerned, her relationship with her father and with the other woman is her business. Everything else is my business. How I parent, I parent on my own. I, I, I don't see the need to involve somebody that had an affair with my ex-husband in my life why would I want to do that she's not she's not a friend no she, I, he was she... very aware that she was having an affair with my husband that's not a good basis friendships about based on solid foundations that's not a solid foundation for a friendship that she was happy to trot around behind my back while I looked after four young children exactly it, it's like conspiring in somebody's abuse is not is not the stuff of friendship exactly and and nobody wants to talk about that which is just another way 
of validating the abuse and minim you know saying it's not such a big deal it's minimizing it it's minimizing that you should have any um you know ill feelings or towards this person i mean it's a big thing to get over your ill feelings right i think you, you know to heal you the best you can hope for is indifference and to not be consumed with how you were treated you know that that's enough but this this whole like next level uh crazy conscious uncoupling is just absurd well, could, okay so this could get very complicated couldn't it okay. because what about if she gets a new partner as well so uh, is this going to be a whole jolly little group of individuals what about oh, you're saying if, if they break up then then do you yeah, what about stay friends if, what and about remember if, what about if there's another affair because that's you know that's not oh, unhappy, right. okay. is it so what about if he has an affair with somebody else is this going to be another joyful addition to the sisterhood? Are you going to, sure. it could all get very complicated with this. Sort of, it reminds me of, you know, when you're at school and you do those kind of Venn diagrams with little circles <laughs> and everyone looking in, it could just get, I would just rather focus on my own life, my own way of parenting, get on with it, except I think it's very difficult when you have children. I think you do have to accept that there is going to be this individual who has caused massive, massive heartbreak in your life who is going to have involvement with your children. And there's nothing you can do about that. Yeah. Um, and I don't like it, but I just I just choose to just go, right, what goes on over there stays over there. Nothing to do with me. Well, I think you're right to point out it's a big shit sandwich, right? Nobody, nobody likes the shit sandwich. And what this is doing is rebranding the shit sandwich as delicious. It's like, it's not a shit sandwich. You can eat this and find it tasty and wonderful. And, you know, that's the whole thing of like, <laughs> this woman is no threat to you. There's no baby mama drama. You know, you've just made that up in your head. She didn't do anything wrong. And again, it's it's ignoring the the original cheater in all of this, whoever your ex is, and that you're just all sort of doing this performative pick me dance to show that you can get along. Well, who who does that benefit? You know, I'm sure actually, the other woman isn't thrilled to be your friend either. I mean, this is all just impression management. I, I don't know about you, Tracy. I find life really busy. So I work, I, <laughs> I have the house, I've got four children, I've got a lot to be doing with. And I, I tend to, I find that even the friends that I really like, I sometimes struggle to find time to, to do the things I want to do with people I like. Why would I want to spend time with somebody that I have got nothing in common with apart from they had an affair with my partner? That's for the children true. that's why i mean that's that's the club they're bludgeoning you with you don't make time for the mistress now wife like shame on you you're bitter like i think you need to work on that sarah i mean that's what that message is right that your children are going to be worse off if you can't eat that shit sandwich and like all good propaganda i think there's like a nugget of truth in this which i'm going to kind of try to get to it, which is that you shouldn't be slopping your grief on children and and it's best to be civil right i just say the, be civil and do what court orders say nobody wants drama you know you don't want to be like hating on this person in front of your kids but that is a far different uh, benchmark than being friends with them and and again, doing the matching pajamas and the t-shirts. And if you think I'm kidding, you got to look on social media because there's all sorts of these, you know, we're a blended family. And, you know, that that's great if you're blended and it wasn't about infidelity. But, yeah, it, it's nuts. It's nuts. I think if you're genuinely blended and maybe there was no infidelity and it's... Uh, but I, I do think it's very, very difficult to become friends with someone who has been instrumental in... Uh, unless someone's been through an affair you can't possibly comprehend how devastatingly painful that that level of deceit ha is and the impact that it has on on your life. And actually, I'm I'm very happy now. I, I actually feel grateful to my ex's affair partner. I'm glad <laughs> they found each other, but it's taken me a long time to get to that point. And I don't think it would be a good relationship to model for my children that it was so okay that we were all skipping around together. It It sort of sends a message saying, it's okay to behave like that. Yeah. That's fine. This is what we do. This is what, you know, I would then be, I would then be saying that that behavior, and I actually, I remember when my, um, I remember when my husband 
had the ex-husband had the affair and he actually said to me oh you'd like her and I think oh, his yeah. logic for saying that I'd like her was look she likes me and you like yes. me and look at you you all like me, <laughs> me. Right. we're all united <laughs> together <laughs> and, and that's the thing that the fundamental link in the relationship would be him the mm -hmm. person that had the affair and they love that it just gives the opportunity and, and I would imagine that that would also give the opportunity for more playing off against one another more yeah. opportunity for the pick me dance well, I, I'd like to explore further this idea that this, you know, this arrangement is good for the children, because is it to me, it's just another level of mindfuckery. If you go through infidelity, your children, try as you might, are going to see your grief, they're going to see the drama, they're going to see your pain. And they're going to see how you come back from that they are watching you and you are modeling this. And if you turn around and go like, okay, that person who stabbed me in the back, you know, who did this, you saw my grief. Well, they're friends. I mean, what, what are you telling your children to do if it ever happens to them? You know, you, your pain isn't legitimate. You need to like reach out to these people and I, it's it hold them closer to you. So what they can do, you, 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 how could you be intimate with somebody you can't trust? at a very fundamental level. And not only that you can't trust them, but that they harmed you so grievously. I, that to me is like, that's not doing your children any favors. And your kids probably have their own feelings about the affair partner now, stepmother in this situation that we started with. It would be going against their feelings. And I think, I think really the best thing you can do is everybody get their own life and don't let that Venn diagram overlap any more than it has to, you know, which is high occasions. I think there's an argument that when, and, and I think it is difficult. So when you have to be civil and when you have to see them, then that you're just going to have to deal with that. You know, things like weddings and big events and school functions. There's not much you, you can do about that. You, you, you will have to be civil, but you don't create a situation where you're spending time together and pretending to be friends with someone who isn't fundamentally not your friend. They're never going to be your friend. Yeah, no, they're not. Which, why do you think that this is like a cultural zeitgeist that this whole, maybe it's not in the UK, but it is in the States, this whole Gwyneth Paltrow, who is friends with her, her husband's ex, not an affair partner, but, you know, going out of their way to like hold hands and show how evolved they are. And they love each other very much. And to me, it's, it's like, um, I don't know, it's smug and aspirational. And, oh, are you somebody who divorces and has base emotions like anger and grief? Well, I'm above that. I take the Hollywood approach, <laughs> you know, like we're just beautiful and glittery and everybody's friends. And, that's to me it's just not real it's yeah i it's, it's, fundamentally i think the issue with it is is you'd say okay it's for the children mm -hmm. but then a lot of affairs um the children sort of come in into this so for instance when my husband had an affair he said it was because of the children she didn't need babysitters i'd got caught up in looking after the children he wasn't central anymore so yeah. the affair was because of the children mm -hmm. and then because of the children, you have to be friends with the affair partner. So I, I think it's also very unhealthy for children to think that somehow they orchestrate your behavior and what you do and who you're friends with. I mean, I my children have yeah. their own life. I have my own life. We're not all sort of ex, a big extension of one another. Mm -hmm. And I think it's I think it's unhealthy to to model this that your behavior is in somehow dictated by them yeah right i think you're onto something i think it underscores the narcissistic worldview of people who preach this shit which is that everyone is just an extension of them and that's why we should all get along because your right hand wouldn't want to be in a fight with your left hand <laughs> you know you're all just part of the same body you're all just you know, of what, and it is this, this impression management. I mean, that's really what it is, impression management, that everybody fall in line. And I think if you've left a cheater, if you've divorced them, or you were left, however it played out, um, why would you want to be part of that circle? <laughs> you know, 
I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't make sense. And I think too, when this is, when you see these social media or these magazine articles, or in this case, a blog post about this, to people who don't have that, who might be really new to this, who aren't 10 years out like you are or I am, it's painful. You feel like, am I grieving wrong? Like other people manage to be friend friendly and, and I'm filled with rage and despair. Like, did I do it wrong? Uh, so I think, I think it's really, um, damaging these messages and yeah and and also i i just i i just find the idea let me just let me just see the the, the let me just re- find the article and just just read read this the bit that really really shocked me and this was this let me let me see it it's it's the bit it is the bit the, the, at the very bottom the the sort of idea that you can just sit around sort of having it not to, not talking because you've got something in common mm-hmm. or talking about what interests you it's it's talking about um him or or her or whoever as a central part in this you can sit and around and crack old jokes about your kid's father and his smelly boxers, LOL, priceless. No, it's not priceless. <laughs> no. I don't want to, it, it doesn't even imply that you can sit around and have a good conversation about anything other than him. Right. I don't want to and his boxer shorts. Smelly right. boxers. Thank you very much. Why would I want to do that? She <laughs> can have the smelly boxers. I don't want, wish to discuss them any longer. The smelly boxers are no longer part of my life. Thank you very much. Right. Well, it just shows how misogynistic and retrograde it is. It's like, why don't we all just go be sister wives, right? I'll just unite it in his boxer shorts. <laughs> you know, like, who's going to fold them? Who's going to launder them? Who's going to take care of them? Who's going to take them off of him? I mean, just like service him, please him. You know, will we be found wanting? Will we be found pleasure? I mean, it's just, it's the pick me dance. It's crazy. It's crazy. Oh, the, the other thing that, that said here is, um, you know, that the other woman might not necessarily have known about you. She may wow. have not been to blame. Mm-hmm. Um, it could be blameless in this whole situation. Maybe, but again, okay. even if that's the case, you are being asked to have a relationship with somebody purely on the basis of their relationship with somebody who has deceived you. And to me, it doesn't matter whether they knew about it or not. It doesn't matter. Um how they got together the fact is I don't want to have a relationship with somebody because my ex-husband has a relationship with them he is no longer (laughs) central to my life I do not wish to make him central to my life the children will be central in my life but in my own home with my own friends in my own environment not as some kind of subset of him and his glorious new life Sorry, does that, twist, bit, uh, does that make me sound bitter and twisted that I don't no. wish to discuss his boxer shorts with, with the woman <laughs> that he had the affair with? Right. It's all, it all comes back to the boxer shorts. Yeah. I, I, I think most sensible people would agree this sounds nuts. I don't know why people try to peddle this as sophistication. I, I think, you know, maybe they're, I'm sure there are many children of divorce who were pained by the acrimony that their parents felt towards each other or that they can't come together or be civil. And, you know, that's a real thing. That's a real pain. But I think tangled up in that is there's a lot of keeping the truth from children. That's also an advice that could be a whole other podcast about how you can't tell them what really went down or why you don't like this person, right? Because that would be alienating them. Um, to say, well, I don't like Sally because she was an affair partner. And, you know, and yeah, that, that has ramifications in my life. And that, that's why we don't get along. But you can, you can go spend time with them and what goes on there, you know, stays over there. I think that's completely valid and grown up and mature. But I, I, it, you, it can stop there. You know, why... <laughs> Where I thought you were going with the, you know, she could be blameless or, you know, why can't you all get along? Is that, well, what you do have in common is you have terrible taste in men, right? You, you, you were both once attracted to a fuckwit. And I guess that's supposed to be the abiding bond that holds you together. <laughs> Whereas I think if you lived this, you'd be like, I, I had enough of that fuckwit. I, I don't want to have anything to do with him or anyone in his orbit. I, we made children. I can't avoid that. But beyond that, no, thank you. That's my I think it's I think it's very dangerous that if you can't skip around in this joyful fashion with this deeply dysfunctional carry-on going on, 
that you are in some way lacking. You're not putting the children first. You're bitter. You're twisted. You're not able to put the love for your children first. And I, I think that's, you know, that's quite insulting to those of us that sure. don't want to have a relationship with, with this this person that well, just wants to get on, it, on with our own lives. Well, first of all, consider the source. Who says it? Who cares? Some anonymous blogger. It's woman festing, like manifesting, woman manifesting. It's hard to say, but that's the blog this came from. Yeah, I think it's insulting. Sure. I mean, you're, you're the bitter bunny. You can't you can't get on. You're not you're not grieving right. You're not doing it right. But in terms of like who shows it for your children, I don't care what people think. I mean, are you waking up with them? Are you, you know, dealing with their school book reports and schlepping them to their soccer practices and doing you show up for your kids? You're the show up parent. Everyone else can shut up. I mean, that is my feeling about it. It is hard work. And I mean, I guess I am a bitter bunny about deadbeat parents who want to take the victory lap and, you know, do the proud parent thing when they don't do any of the work that that really pisses me off to no end. (laughs) It's a deep vein of my anger about that. And if somebody wants to say my parenting is less than because I showed up for my kid and I did the hard work and they don't like the attitude with which I did it, well, fuck them very much. And and that's what I feel about these articles like this. Fuck you very much. You know, no, I, no, I don't no, want no, that no, shit no. sandwich. Two mature women who have a heart of gold chose oh. to put their differences to the side and their children's needs first. That's what it's all about because... You, you are know. putting your children's needs first. You know, that that's the thing. It, in, inherent in that criticism is saying you didn't somehow put your children's needs first. I, I actually think, them. To, be, to be honest, I think the ultimate um, revenge for my husband's, ex-husband's affair partner would be for me to trot around there. Maybe I could bring the children with me because he's not actually seen his children for a very long time. Yes. So maybe I could <laughs> go with them in tow and we could, uh, we could just, uh, and I'm sure she'd be horrified if I arrived and I wanted to have a discussion about his boxer shorts and have a joy. She, she, I don't think she'd be any more interested in, in me being around there than, than vice versa. I'm sure she'd feel completely off balance by that. And, and I'm only sorry that when they were younger, that you didn't let her have the full experience of four children ages two to 11, so that she really could, you know, change the nappies and deal with the potty accidents and make the snacks and, you know, just do all of it, right? And you can go have a, a day of rest. I mean, part of it is just, yeah, get, give them, <laughs> they, they want to be gracious, lovely co-parents, give, give it to them on a plate, let them have it. And you go enjoy your free time. I, it, yeah, they can keep the fantasy because you're there doing all the hard work of, of raising them. And I know that that's, you're winning. I mean, a bunch of people would love to be in your shoes of, of somebody who's not, who's checked out, who's not actively interfering in their life. But yeah, I mean, I, I think, I, I think it's the hard, I remember when I found out about the affair, one of the hardest things is thinking this person is going to uh, my fear was that not only would she have him but she would in some way ingratiate herself into my children's lives and and they would choose her over me because i was she was younger she was fun she was possibly more on their wavelength i was the boring mum doing all the boring stuff and i was terrified that they would just find that all a lot more exciting and alluring and attractive. And then what you do learn is they don't mm. and that doesn't happen. Um, and I, I, I was, I was very anxious about that, but now I, I realize, and again, it's the benefit of hindsight is, is being 10 years down mm. the line that nobody replaces your, your mum or your dad or, and, and, but I do find this suggestion that unless you, you know, that, that you are in some way lesser, for choosing to live your own life. You know, does it go the other way around then? So say I had a new man in my life. Mm-hmm. My ex-husband be expected to be best friends with him as well. Ugh. Would he be expected to be coming around to my house to have a, a chortling, joyful laughter about, you know, whatever I'd been up to? Uh, well, if you had a man in your life, he, he wouldn't have been an affair partner. So it's it's a different kind of, you know, playing field. But my first thought is... Ooh, no, I, you know, I don't, (laughs) these are not worlds that need to collide. I mean, if if people can do it and they don't have the overlay of infidelity, okay, you know, whatever. 
but I don't think that makes you better. It may, it just means you have a different relationship and, and it's not poisoned by betrayal. Um, you know, if you had an ex-husband, he was just an ex-husband, not because he was a duplicitous fuck with, with a double life, but just he was an ex-husband and you had a new man and they got on. Yeah. Okay. Great. But that's just not the situation we're dealing with. And it's not the one that this person is peddling advice about. They're talking about affairs too and baby mamas and drama. I, you know, okay, one thing I thought was interesting, and clearly they haven't updated this blog post, was they um, they say that this mature relationship sounds like Will and Jada Pinkett Smith, who are, <laughs> who, you know, famous famously are uh, divorced yet living together and have the red table and there it's constant drama you know um and then he famously slugged chris rock a few years ago at the yes award yeah. show I, right so i don't think that this is something to aspire to they're saying oh friends friends, friends. <laughs> like, the couple that you think exemplify this are like a hot mess so yeah it doesn't work no i i i can't see any any evidence of even a glimmer of good advice lurking in that particular article. <laughs> I just so, think I, I think I will choose my friends on the basis of who I want to be friends with. I do not wish to be an extension of my ex-husband and his affair partner. And thank you very much. Um, I'm my children are not affected. They're they they they're happy. They're stable, despite the fact that we didn't have this weird <laughs> relationship where we would joyfully putting my ex at the center of all our lives I, I think it's what you what you say in your blog you know these people love being central yeah I think he would have loved that he'd have loved that if um if I remember him saying actually just after he, the, the affair oh, we can all have Christmases together no <laughs> I, I was just going to make a joke about the matching holiday pajamas. So he would like that. He he would oh, do. Oh, he'd that. love it. Yes, he'd love that. If it, you know, all telling him how magnificent he was. Oh, God. And again, justify. I, I think boundaries is very important to model to children. I yeah. think I think showing children that if someone abuses you, then you walk away and you, you know, you you are strong and you get on with your life. I'm not suggesting you know lying in a heap and 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 yeah. saying how bitter you are maybe when they're not looking you can do that but um i don't think i think this is a very a very very unhealthy idea that you can all be friends being friends with I someone know. who has abused you that's yeah that's well th that's the thing it's like there are standards for friendship i mean you can be friends with anybody right you can pay people to be your friend you can talk to your pillow i mean it just depends on what you think a friend is and you have high standards for your friends, you, you know, beginning with they don't abuse you or fuck your husband. That that's to me, that's setting a pretty low bar, you know, don't fuck my spouse. That's, <laughs> that's but they're saying, no, that bar is too high. Like you need to lower your standards even further for friendship. And to which I say a big, no, thank you. No, no, thanks. That's not a message that interests me at all. I think I think we should conclude proceedings by throwing it out there that if anyone has successfully successfully managed to have a really, are you best friends with your ex's affair partner? And have <laughs> you got, have you got right a story to, us. to tell us? Get in touch with us because it would be good to, to hear it from your perspective because maybe Tracy, we're just a pair of bitter individuals. I want to hear from the bitter people too. I, did you try it and did it fail spectacularly? Yeah, let's let's hear some of your stories on this. How did it all pan out? Were you sort of sitting having a glass of wine and joyfully laughing over, you know, the things that he did? Did it all go wrong? And was it better for the kids? Your stories, share them with us. Yeah. And if you have matching pajamas, send us pictures. So you're a little overly obsessed with matching pajamas, I think. There's something going on here. <laughs> I am. There's a picture of Bruce Willis and Demi Moore and their kids <laughs> with matching pajamas. I will share it. So okay. Well thank you. That wraps another episode of Tell Me How You're Mighty. You want to leave us a mighty story or a fuckwit of the week submission? Check out our new website, tellmehowyourmighty.com. That's your spelt Y-O-U-R-E. We've got all the episodes, show notes, links to our guests, and you can see the tea room where Sarah and I first met. If you enjoyed this episode, please review the podcast and follow us. 
Thanks. See you next week.